So I was peacefully converting my Gatsby React sites to SvelteKit when I hit a bit of a snag. The basic idea is that I have a bunch of markdown posts for lessons on my course sites, and in some cases I need to show a paywalled preview version of that lesson like this. So this isn't just CSS trickery to hide the rest of the content, the rest of the content is never loaded. So in the old version of my site with Gatsby, I had this custom MDX provider that handled creating this preview version of the markdown content for me. In SvelteKit, I'm using MD specs to support markdown and Svelte components, and it was at this point I nervously searched for if MD specs supports the same functionality. And it didn't. So this feature might seem trivial, but the end result of the work I do in this video involves understanding abstract syntax trees, writing a custom remark plugin to manipulate a markdown abstract syntax tree, and creating a custom preprocessor for Svelte. So I had very little understanding of all of this stuff before I began, and a couple of days later I had my solution working. So although I'm going to show you step by step how I figured out and arrived to a solution to this problem, this video isn't really about this specific solution. It's about facing any kind of difficult development problem and the sort of process you might go through to figure it out, first and foremost by actually trying to do it yourself. So when we find ourselves in a situation like this, where we don't really know what we are doing or how to solve a problem, uh, where do we begin? So one way we can start is by going one level deeper. So I'm using MD specs, but I don't really know how it works. So I should start by learning more about MD specs, either through their own documentation or through browsing the source code. And if that doesn't end up being enough, you can always keep going deeper. For example, what do I need to build my own version of MD specs? And then eventually to how do I build my own framework like SvelteKit? So at some point this becomes ridiculous. I'm not about to create a whole new framework to support this use case. If I had to do that, it probably means I'm doing something really stupid. But it's important to understand that you can always go deeper and understand at a deeper level what is going on, and that is probably going to help you operate at the higher levels where we are actually working. So after investigating MD specs, I quickly discovered that it supports rehype and remark plugins. So from previous experience, I already had the gist of what these do. You can use remark plugins to do things like create an automatic table of contents for your markdown posts or auto link the headers and so on. But my use case is super weird and niche and not surprisingly, I wasn't able to find a remark plugin that deletes a whole bunch of content from a markdown file. But this does give me a point to start. I have something to latch onto now. Now I can investigate how to create my own remark plugin. So at this point, it might be tempting to immediately search out tutorials or templates for how to create a custom remark plugin and try to get your custom plugin hacked together as quickly as you can. But I think it's worth taking the time to build a more solid understanding of the problem space before beginning. So having a shallow understanding and trying to learn just enough to get by is usually going to lead to endless frustration and you're not going to improve as much. So first, some more research was in order. I had a bit of a leg up here because I have used abstract syntax trees a little in the past, uh, just in a different context, and I knew Remark makes use of abstract syntax trees in some capacity, but I knew very little of how it all actually works. So I wanted to seek out a couple of things here. I wanted some kind of source that would explain in depth the actual underlying mechanisms of how it all works, and some sort of higher level tutorial that focuses on just building a Remark plugin. So I found that in this post from Ryan Filler and this tutorial from Jason Langstorff. So this in-depth post allowed me to build the understanding that markdown passes like Remark can take in some markdown content and turn it into a markdown abstract syntax tree. So an abstract syntax tree is a tree representation of that markdown content that allows for finer programmatic control rather than doing something like matching strings or regexes to make modifications. And so we can then apply any number of transformers to that AST and finally compile the resulting tree into some output, usually HTML. So a remark plugin is essentially one of those transformers. It will be given the current abstract syntax tree representation of the document, and it can then make any changes to that tree that it wants. So after building that general mental model of how this all works, I then took on the tutorial from Jason. 
And that allowed me to just get a feel for how all of this actually works when we're coding it up. So I try to avoid having the tutorial hold my hand as much as possible by first just making my own assumptions of what is happening and noting that with some comments. Then as I'm reading through the post properly, I can come back and see the things where I've misunderstood and correct those wrong assumptions. So after first following the tutorial as presented, I then adapted that to function the way I will want my eventual proper plugin to behave. And we can see my uh, attempt at this plugin here. So the way these remark plugins work is that they are given any options for your plugin and then the abstract syntax tree. And you will then mutate that tree directly to include any changes you want. So this is typically done by using the visitor pattern. We use this uh, visit utility, which we supply with the tree. We can then use this predicate to match specific nodes in that tree. And then we can also specify this section, which says what we want to do with the matching node in the tree. So this visitor function is going to visit every node in the tree and apply our changes if necessary. So in this case, I check the total lines in the markdown document to figure out where I want to start deleting content. And then when visiting each node, I check on what line this node starts. And if it is after my target amount of lines, I delete the node. So now I've already got the basic idea down. I can take a markdown abstract syntax tree, modify it and convert it into HTML that only includes a percentage of the original content. So now I just need to do that in the context of my SvelteKit project. And I will also need to deal with a few more problems, like the fact that I still need the original content as well as the shortened content. So I'll have to figure out how to return both values. And this was the elephant in the room I was choosing to ignore, and it certainly does come around to trample me a bit later. So getting this working in SvelteKit ended up being quite easy. Uh, you can see in my initial implementation here, I basically just pasted more or less the same code from that initial plugin into my Svelte uh, config file. And then I supply that as a remark plugin to MD Specs. So now I just need to deal with the issue that this plugin will apply to all of my markdown files. And I'm no longer going to have access to the full content. I'm only going to have the shortened content. So I needed to do some more digging. When I eventually import these markdown files, I get an object back that looks like this where the content of the file is on the default property and the front matter from the post, the things like the title, the date and so on is on the metadata property. So the most obvious and desirable solution here for me would be able to add an additional preview property that contains the altered content whilst default keeps the original content. The big problem is that I have no idea how to do that. So I had to dig more into how MD specs works, but I ran into a bit of a wall with that approach. And in some cases, this can be kind of demoralizing, especially if you've already sort of made a lot of progress and you think you're doing really well. And then you hit something that sort of just brings everything to a stop. And you're sort of thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to do this after all. Now, even if that does happen, you still learned a lot to get to this point. So that time isn't wasted. But fortunately, in this case, for me, my investigation did get me onto a new path. I noticed this because MD Specs itself is a preprocessor for Svelte. And I realized that I was going to have to go a bit deeper and write my own Svelte preprocessor. So my idea was that perhaps I could write a custom preprocessor that would take all of the markdown files I am interested in creating previews of and duplicate them with an extension of .preview.md. Then my remark plugin could check if the file ends in .preview.md and use that as the basis as to whether or not to shorten the content. So it was time to learn about Svelte preprocessors. And again, it wasn't as bad as you might think. So the idea is that when Svelte compiles your application, it needs everything to be in a syntax that the Svelte compiler understands. A preprocessor provides us with a way to receive the markup styles or script and apply some kind of logic to that before Svelte will attempt to compile the files. So you can do all sorts of fancy things with that, like perhaps support some syntax that Svelte doesn't support natively. But in my case, I wrote a simple preprocessor that would take the markup for any files that end with .md and that are also on this specific path. And I would then basically just create a copy of that file and save it at the location with the same file name with .preview.md on the end. And I also added this is preview property to the YAML front matter so that my other plugin could detect whether it should run on the content or not. 
because my plugin has access to the Markdown content. It doesn't have access to the file name. And since I'm just adding this is preview property to the very start of the file, I just used a simple string replacement rather than delving into more abstract syntax tree stuff, which would be more appropriate for more complex changes to this file. And this line here that excludes any files that end in .preview.md was also an important decision. As I discovered, this preprocessor will also run on any files that are created during the preprocessor step, which is how I created an infinite loop that resulted in a bunch of files like this in my project. So the last thing I did was make some minor changes to my remark plugin. So I set it up to accept a uh, percentage configuration and I also modified it so that the plugin only modifies the AST if the is preview property is included in the front matter. So if we jump into the files over here on the right, we can see that for any lessons that are in the, the lessons folder, we are getting this testlesson.preview.md automatically generated. And in my page.ts file for this route, I choose between the preview version or the full version based on this is public property. So it's going to load the sort of full lesson by default and it's going to check that is public property. And if it is not set to is public, it will instead load this preview version. So if we check right now, we can see that this lesson is set to uh, false for is public. And you can see in here, we are getting the shortened version. Uh, we only have two of the paragraphs included, but if I just change this to uh, true and we jump back over here, we can now see that all seven paragraphs are being loaded. So the end result of a remark plugin that modifies an MDAST and a custom Svelte preprocessor sounds pretty fancy, but hopefully this has shown that the path to get there wasn't as scary as it might seem. And it doesn't require you knowing all of this stuff before you begin. And maybe sometimes you will discover that the complexity is too high for what you are capable of right now, or perhaps you don't have enough time to study and learn the parts you need. But I am confident that if you do default to this do-it-yourself sort of mentality, you will become a much better developer. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, this is a little different to the usual style of video that I do. So if you did find this useful or interesting at all, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you in the next one.